we are going to do the same drawing or the same we have the same situation as question but we are going to solve it by not using a construction but we are rather going to use mathematics so remember what we need to do is we need to take each of these three forces the 10 the 7 and the 6 and we need to break them up into their horizontal forces and their vertical forces. I'm going to start with the 10 Newton. So I'm just going to show the 10 Newton. I'm going to say 10 Newton. Let me do now. Now for the 10 Newton, we would have to use a triangle like this. Can you see that there's a nice triangle because now we can use trigonometry. So let me quickly draw that triangle over here for us. And we know that that's a 10 Newton like that going there and this is a 30 degree angle. Now, if we use trigonometry, we need to remember Sokotoa. And I'm gonna call this X and Y. If I look at X, I know that that is the adjacent. And if I look at the 10, that is the hypotenuse. So cos will be the best. So I will say that cos 30 is equal to the adjacent over the hypotenuse. I will then multiply the 10 over and I will find that x is going to be equal to 10 multiplied by cos 30. And so that's going to give an answer of 8.66 newtons. And if we just look at how the 10 newton is orientated, we would know that that is going to go to the left. I'm now going to work out y, which is the vertical component. And to do that, I will realize that y is the opposite of this angle, and 10 is the hypotenuse. So I can then say that sin 30, because that's opposite and hypotenuse, is equal to y over 10. I can then get the y alone, and what I would find is that that'll be 5 newtons. And we can look at this orientation, and we should realize that that is up. So we have now completed the 10 newton force. I'm then going to do the 7 newton force next. So I'll do that one over here. So for the 7 newton, we have a little triangle that would look something like that. I'll draw that over here for us. So that's 7 newtons and 20 degrees, and then I'll have x and y. Then I'm just going to use the same technique. And I, from this triangle, I can see that it's going to be cos for the x and sin for the y. It won't always be like that. But for this one, it will. So we can say that cos 20 is equal to x over 7. We then find that x will be equal to 7 multiplied by cos 20, which is 6,58 if I round off to two decimals. And if I look at the arrow, I know that that's going to go to the right. Then I do the vertical component by using sin. So I say sin 20 is equal to y over 7 and then I just multiply 7 with sin, sin 20 and that'll be 2.39 2.39 newtons and if I look at the orientation of this it's gonna go upwards and then lastly we are gonna do the 6 newton force which I will do over here so the 6 newton has a triangle that would look like that so I'll draw that there we go, where we have an angle of 40. We have a force of 6 newtons. And of course, we need to find the horizontal and the vertical. So once again, cos is going get, to get us the horizontal, and sin would get us the vertical. So I'm going to go cos 40 equals to x over 6. And then to get x alone, I would multiply 6 by cos 40. And that's going to give us 4.60 if we round to two decimal places. And this arrow is going to go more to the right. So I'm going to say right. Then to do the vertical, we're going to use sin. So that's going to be sin 40. It won't always be like that. So just look out each time. But for this one, it will. So sin 40 is equal to y over 6. I would then get y alone by multiplying 6 by sin 40. And that'll be 3.86 newtons. And that's going to go down, actually. If you look at the arrow, that arrow is pointing downwards. All right. So there we now have the 
10 Newton, the 7 Newton and the 6 Newton complete. Now we can put everything together. So let's look in the horizontal direction. So I'm just going to say horizontal and you need to choose a positive direction. I'm going to choose to the right as positive. So all of so that means we're going to get 6.58 which is to the right plus 4.6 minus 8.66 because that's going to the left. And if we go work this out, we get a final value of 2.52 newtons to the right. Because our answer is positive and we chose right as positive, then our, it means to the right. Then we are going to look at the vertical. So we're going to go vertical. And for that, I'm going to choose upwards as positive. So we're going to have the 5 newton up and the 2.39 up. So that's going to be 5 plus 2.39. And then this 3.86 is down. So I'm going to say minus 3.86. And if we work this out, we end up with 3.53 newtons, and that is going to be up because we chose up as positive and we got a positive answer. Now that we know the left and the right, which is 2.52, and we know the up and the down, we can combine them using Pythagoras because if we're going to the right and then we're going up, then we can work out this value by using Pythagoras. And so the right is 2.52 and the up is 3.53. So the result to the power of 2 will be equal to 2.52 squared plus 3.53 squared. And that's going to give us, well, I'm just going to square root all in one step so we can square root. That's how Pythagoras works, actually. And to two decimal places, we're going to get 4.34 newtons. Now we need to work out this little angle over here. And so we can use reverse trigonometry. So we know that we have the opposite and we have the adjacent. So that'll be tan. So I can say tan, but I must use shift tan. So I'm going to write it like that. Of the opposite over the adjacent. Oh no, I'm making things confusing here. Let's just say tan of whatever the angle is, is equal to the opposite over the adjacent. And then to get tan or to get the angle, you must say shift tan on your calculator. And let's call this angle theta. And so what you'll find is that theta is going to be about 54.48 degrees. Now, this angle that I'm measuring is going to be north of the east line. Can you see that? It's north of the east. So I'll say north of east.